Charlie, thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, Manoj, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's an honor and a pleasure. Um, I've been at Broadcom for about 20 years, but in the last few years prior to this job, I was the chief operating officer at Broadcom, um, and specifically during the COVID days, which was a lot of fun. First off, if you think about Juniper and Broadcom, you know, we've been partners for well over 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it started off with Juniper Custom ASIC Design, where we partnered closely with Avago, which is now Broadcom, mm -hmm. and then a plethora of our systems, whether it's routing systems, whether it's you know, Ethernet switching systems, you know, wireless, and even security systems have been based on Broadcom chipsets. Mm -hmm. And most recently, we're also collaborating on CERTES and optical technologies. So there's a lot of rich partnership heritage there. Thank you for that partnership. Well, thank you for that partnership. And as I said, I've been at Broadcom for 20 years. So for that entire journey that I've had, we've interacted on almost every technology we have including, believe it or not, on LEDs. That is very true, very true. But today, we're gonna to talk about AI market trends. When we talk about AI, especially Gen AI, has mm -hmm. taken the world by storm mm -hmm. in many ways. Whether it's um, ChatGPT, or whether it's Gemini, whether it's you know, Claude or Llama, these are all household names now, right? Mm -hmm. So the world is changing so fast. And if you look at the people behind this, it first started off with the hyperscalers, naturally, mm -hmm. but now enterprises of all shapes and sizes, AI companies of all shapes and sizes, and even sovereign nations are building large AI clusters, right? There's an amazing amount of that going on. This is going to be bigger than the internet. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I, I have to tell you, we're very lucky to be in these positions during this period. I can't, I can't agree more with you. I think um, our journey in AI actually has started in the last, I would say, decade. Uh, collaborating with some of the hyperscalers who, you're right, are the bulk of the market today. And because of them, we see this growth and it is becoming a huge inflection point, I think, not just in us, for us in tech, but you're right, I think this is gonna be used in so many other applications, medical, um, public sector, all, all kinds of applications we'll see beyond even video generations and imaging. And so as a result, I think the technologies we're working on are gonna be critical, especially the stuff we're collaborating mm -hmm. on. But to be specific, if I look at the hyperscalers, last year they spent, I think, close to 100, just the top four in the US, $145 billion on their total capex, which includes AI. Just in the last 90 days, in their earnings calls, they've announced that they're increasing that number to over 200 billion because of AI. So that almost $60 billion incremental spend with only four companies, just to imagine the amount of technology and obviously innovation that's gonna drive. And to your point, we're seeing a huge waterfall into the enterprise, which is the next opportunity, I think, for both of us that we're excited about. So I'm excited to see what you're planning to do in this space as well. From our perspective, I think AI is not new to us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the missed acquisition which happened about six sure. years ago, sure. uh, we are early adopters of AI. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are the first networking company which brought AI ops to networking sure. so that we have a pretty much self-driving network in the enterprise campus right now. Again, it's possible because of the Marvis AI engine. So, in so much so that you know, Gardner has validated it in Magic Quadrants, and you know, my belief is that Juniper is writing the playbook for AI for networking. And you know, no other company comes even close. But today the conversation is not about AI for networking, but networking for AI. You know, <laughs> all the buzzes about that, right? All the industry buzzes about Gen AI and these large scale models and training and all that stuff. So on this front, we've been engaged with hyperscalers, we've been getting great traction there. Mm -hmm. We engage with enterprises. And when I say enterprises, it's not just the large enterprises, you know, small enterprises, mid-sized enterprises, everybody's interested in this. Mm -hmm. Across multiple verticals, you know, whether it's pharma, whether it's retail, whether it's finance. And let me just make it real with a few use cases. Probably that's probably the best, right? One large cloud provider who we're working with, they want to train a very large scale model with our gear mm -hmm. and our gear based on our systems with your chips, and we'll talk more about that later. Yes, thank you. Second, um, a large enterprise, a retailer, mm -hmm. you know, they want to do AI for e-commerce. They started off with public cloud, but they quickly decided, okay, they want to build it on-prem, they want to have an AI cluster for both training as well as inference. So they're also using our gear. Mm -hmm. 
a large financial in the Wall Street in, in Wall Street in New York. Mm -hmm. They have thousands of GPUs in the harness, you know, doing complex financial analysis. Mm -hmm. And they actually came to our AI lab here. They tested their ML stuff with our benchmark lab, and they were happy with it, like how Ethernet, Ethernet Fabric performed with that. And Ethernet, open system, what is your perspective on that compared to some of the closed systems we are seeing today? I think you said the magic word which is Ethernet, it actually built out the Internet for us, built out the campus, built out now what we know as the AI infrastructure. Both of us are contributing to this with the whole industry to continue to evolve Ethernet and keep it open. Ability to scale it, which is actually what we both are doing, and you referred to some of the wins we, we both have, and mm -hmm. we're very happy and proud to be providing that technology to you and to the hyperscaler. Talking about power, so a recent article in The Economist, you mm -hmm. know, stated the International Energy Agency, IEA, talking about the demand by these power-hungry AI clusters as well as cryptocurrencies. Both of them, demand which is putting on the grid. Mm -hmm. you know, the expectation is that in 2026, almost 800 terawatt hours is going to be the requirement by just to these use cases. Mm -hmm. And a grid is not there which is why power efficiency is actually vital in this whole equation. You know, what is your perspective on that? I totally agree with respect to the power, and actually the power starts with semiconductors, to tell you the truth, and from there it grows into the systems that you build and provide, and then the data centers that our customers, whether they're the enterprise guys or hyperscalers do. But I brought one toy with me that I actually would like to show you, and I, I know you know this very well. So this is, Tom, this is actually the fastest Ethernet chip in the world. It went to production last year from a silicon point of view. And it was the first chip that actually can do uh, in five nanometer, 51 terabit per second. And the black thing that you see in here is the die. And as you can see, it's a single die. This is the only chip in the world that actually can deliver 51 terabit per second with a single die. Every other solution that came afterwards late to market has to use multiple dies. So as a result of that, the first advantage is five nanometer, low power. Second advantage, single die versus multiple dice, low power. And then the ability to actually do all of this in a single system with the power efficiency that Juniper brings to the table, and I believe, I'm gonna pass it to you, I believe you have been shipping this product to the market, which we're both very proud of, and it actually sets a new benchmark in terms of delivering the lowest power network for AI infrastructure. Well, well said, Charlie. I think you know, we are absolutely proud to collaborate with you on this, and I'm also proud to say that we delivered the industry's first 800 gig system based on this Tomahawk 5 chipset. I'm very excited. The customer feedback has been flawless, it's been great. It's an exciting time for us which actually segues into you know, what's next for us. Mm -hmm. right? you know, what's our vision? What's, what are the solutions we're bringing to the market from both companies' perspective? And maybe it's a good time to kind of talk a little bit about that. I think there's also capabilities that we can drive lower power as we both innovate together at the system level with optics capability. Mm -hmm. and, and I think mm -hmm. if you think about the heritage of Juniper, where Juniper started as a company. And if you think of the Heritage Broadcom going back to the Avago days, actually Avago comes from HP Microelectronics, which invented actually the laser. So we have a lot of capabilities mm -hmm. between us that could set a new benchmark in power reduction and efficiency. And I'd love to hear from you a little bit more before I tell you a bit more about what we're doing. I'd love to hear as well a bit more about what Juniper is planning to do in, in this space as well. Thank you, Charlie. First off, proud to have this and industry's first 800 gig full system for AI clusters. And our own custom silicon, which does debuffer, is also used for 800 gig you know, you know, backbone applications. Now people are building AI backbones, not just the traditional Vanguard right. backbone. Okay. So you're proud to say both of them are there. But it's not just that. We have our system, intent-based system for heterogeneous you know, operations management, as well as, you know, automation and closed loop avoidance. Mm -hmm. uh, so that 
that is actually our Appstra system, which actually you know, makes sure that you know, from an end-to-end perspective, from a NIC to the network to the workload perspective, we can actually manage things properly, even in a heterogeneous environment. And what I told earlier about MIST, we're taking the MIST technology and the Marvis AI engine and expanding it to the data center to provide data center assurance. Mm -hmm. how, how does the data center become self-healing? So there's a lot of cool innovations we're bringing together. But I'm also equally proud to say that both of us believe in that open ecosystem world, you know, open standards, open ecosystem. Right from the founding of the company, Juniper always believed in the open IP networking ecosystem. Yeah. And we continue the same thing, ecosystem, standards, industry consortiums, we are working together, and I think I'm proud to work with you in an open fashion there. For instance, most recently, ML Commons, mm -hmm. another open Ethernet consortium, open consortium, have come out with, you know, how do all these companies compare? How do you benchmark, you know? Why does a particular networking system work with a particular model better than the other? You know, mm -hmm. we need to have some common industry benchmarks to do that. So we worked with ML Commerce to do that. In fact, we are the first company who did a multi-node LAMA-based model for inference in the ML Commons hunts. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to do that. And the last step is power, power, power. What, what fundamental new thing we can do about power? And I know you have some secret sauce up here. Yes. More than this chip, yes. there's something coming. So I would love you to talk. Yes. So first of all, congratulations on all of these achievements. I have to say we are very proud at Broadcom to play a small part in the big innovation that Juniper brings to the market. By the way, we love MIST. We saw and we have been collaborating on MIST for, for many years. We continue to see the success, including the AI capabilities you have. So very proud of that. But to go back to the power, power, power element, as we look at the networks that are built, a lot of the power st stems from optics. So one of the things we thought about is, how do we go drive power significantly lower, for example, in 51 terabit per second systems, and going beyond that in the future? And that's the second toy that I want to show you. So I know this looks like the size of my hand, but it actually is pretty cool stuff. So the, the black die that you see in the middle, is the same one that you see there. That is the Tomahawk 5 die or chip. And this innovation that we are very proud of, we're the only company in the world actually that has proven that we can, using silicon photonics, do co-packaged optics, which are the eight tiles that you see here. It's about 6.4 terabit per second each tile. And these are modular tiles. Um, you actually now can have a fully integrated switch together between Juniper mm -hmm. and Broadcom where you take 400 gig optics, you can take actually 128 of these modules of 400 gig optics and integrate them all into what you're looking at in here. And, and as a result of this, you actually can see at the transceiver level, at the 400 gig optics level. Of course, this is applicable to 800 gig as you plug it in here. 70%, 70 power reduction. Now we are actually changing the game collectively. And as a result of this, not only we get the power savings, which is massive, we're not talking 5, 10, 20%, we're talking 70% we are actually talking about space saving, Absolutely. and ultimately, cost matters. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be over 40% cost savings for our customers. This is an amazing innovation, and we are proud to be the first company yes. to work with you to come bring this to the market. So very excited, excited about power efficiency, but power in the systems is one thing, but we're also working on you know, turning off parts of the system, right? Turning off power, ports, optics, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, ASICs, sometimes entire systems, sometimes, you know, parts of the network. We've got to think in terms of, you know, how do we save the planet in mm -hmm. this regard, right? So, but it all starts with something like this. This innovation is something I'm super excited about, and we're going to continue the collaboration. Very exciting times for us ahead. Thank you for joining us, Charlie. Thank you.